Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Today's video is gonna be another introduction to another one of my snakes. This is another monocle cobra. Now, since I did a video on my adult monocle cobra and went over a lot of information on monocle cobras in general in that video, this one's gonna be a little different. This one's gonna be focused on the breeding. And the reason for this is because this one right here is one that I produced with a pair that I had. How cool is that? Before we get started, if you're new here, I post videos on venomous snakes. So if that's something you enjoy, please subscribe. So as I said, this is a baby from ones that I produced. Now I had a pair of what I believed were two fan cobras. And what those are, are naturally occurring, almost leucistic monocle cobras found in a certain locale in Thailand. They're found in the Sufan Bari province in central Thailand. So the Sufans naturally occurring, almost leucistic. So they're uniform white, creamy white color. And the reason I thought mine were Sufans were, as you can see here, these are the adults their creamy white color and I believe that they were Sioux fans but after talking with somebody that's very knowledgeable on monocle cobras I've learned that they were not true Sioux fans that they were just another type of morph now as I've mentioned in the previous monocle cobra video monocle cobras are very common species of cobra in the venomous keeping hobby here in the United States so there's tons of morphs, different mutations, different colorations. And this one's actually a certain type of morph, but I'm not sure, not knowledgeable on morphs. And here are all the babies. As you can see, they all look different. Have no idea what morphs they were. Let's go over the process of breeding. Now, most breeding starts in the cooler seasons, the beginning of the cooler season, so October, November. But in captivity, that can last until January to March, even. Now, the thing about monocle cobras is they're very simple to breed. Sometimes even just putting them together, keeping them well fed, will initiate breeding. And that's actually what happened one year when I had them paired together. I came back from vacation and there were eggs, non-viable because it was too long till I noticed them, but there were eggs in the enclosure. I did nothing to initiate the breeding and they still bred and laid eggs. But typically what is done is you cool them off for about a month and then after that month you increase the temperature slowly and start to feed them and then that'll initiate the breeding and then after successful breeding it takes about 60 days for the female to lay eggs now what I did was I did lower the temperature not as much as was suggested but I lowered the temperature a little bit for about a month slowly raised it, fed them. They obviously bred and successfully bred. And as I said, 60 days after successful breeding is when the female typically lay eggs. Now, at some point I noticed that the female was very visibly gravid. I could see the eggs in her tummy. So at that point I separated the male and I put a little trap box in with the female that she could lay her eggs in. Between 18 to 25 days before she lays the eggs, the female will shed her skin. I noticed the female shed and she was spending a lot of time in that box. So I just kept an eye on it. And one day I saw those eggs in there. So the average number of eggs they'll lay is between 15 to 30. But they can lay up to even 45 eggs. So once I noticed the eggs, took the female out transferred the eggs into a container with vermiculite, very common substrate used for incubating eggs. 
what I did was kept the humidity in there very high. And the thing with this is you gotta keep it damp, not wet. So I'd go in and see the moisture on the top of the container and I knew it was good to go. And if it was, there was no moisture, I would just lightly mist the corners of the container. So anywhere between 50 to 64 days, probably even longer too, depending on the temperature you're incubating the eggs, that they will start to hatch. For me, it was right at the 50 day mark that I started to see some of the little heads poking out. I'm gonna show all a lot of footage of the babies hatching. It'll be a long video, but I hope you enjoy.
Once they all hatched, I separated them out because there is a possibility of cannibalism. Not all of the eggs hatched, some were stillborn, some just didn't develop at all. Because I put even the slugs in containers with vermiculite and incubated those. Slugs are non-fertile eggs, but I was so excited I wanted to at least give them the chance. Around 8 to 14 days, they'll have their first shed. And the awesome things about cobras that I love is that they're eating machines. No problem getting them to feed. This one I kept was a runt, was not eating, and I wanted to make sure that I held on to it because I wanted to make sure it had a fighting chance. If I gave it to somebody else, who knows how much care and time they would put. But still growing, still doing well, eating on his own. Just an awesome snake. So just to recap, typical breeding starts early cold seasons. So October, November, 60 days after a successful copulation, the female will lay eggs. After that, it could be anywhere from 50 to 64 days longer or shorter, depending on temperature, till they hatch. After they hatch, about eight to 14 days for the first shed. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here, please subscribe. Love you all. Hope you're having a good day. Love you.